All right, hey guys, welcome back. So we are going to continue where we left off in the previous video, where we are talking about homogeneous constant coefficient linear uh, second order differential equations. So that means that we are dealing with equations of the form a times y double prime plus b times y prime plus c times y is equal to zero. It's homogeneous because it is all set equal to zero. It is constant coefficient because we are assuming that a, b, and c are constants. They are not functions of x and they are not functions of y, which also makes it linear. And of course, it's a second order difference equation because the highest order derivative that we have in this equation is the second order, uh, which is y double prime right here. And also recall that we determined in order to solve this differential equation, we are going to assume a solution that is of the form e to the r times t, where r is an unknown that we are solving for. If I were to differentiate this twice, I could plug the results back into our differential equation, and then I could solve for r using the characteristic equation, which comes out to be a r squared plus b times r plus c is equal to zero. This is the characteristic equation and it comes from assuming this solution form. And if you guys want to see more on that, go ahead and watch my previous video. And after we solve this equation using factoring or the quadratic formula, uh, we're going to get two roots because it's a quadratic uh, equation. And recall that I said that there are three cases that we're going to be looking at. And all these three cases depend on what we get for r. The first case that we're going to be looking at, which is uh, in this video, is when r1 and R2 are both elements of the real numbers. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at this case. In the next videos, I'm just gonna go ahead and point them out just so we can keep them in mind. Um, we're gonna let R1 and R2 be complex numbers, meaning they have an imaginary component. And then finally, in this third case, R1 is equal to R2. And again, there's going to be a special way that we're gonna handle this, which we will take a look in a later video after we review cases one and case two. So anyway, that's where we are right now. And now we're going to take a look at a specific example and work through it completely. And I'll point out everything that we went over in the previous videos. And uh, we will get a solution for this constant coefficient linear second order case where we have real roots. All right, so let's consider this example. We have the difference equation 2y double prime plus 7 times y prime plus 3y is all equal to 0. Uh, 2, 7, and 3 are, are all constant coefficients. Um, you can see that there are no linearities in this, and obviously it's, it's a second order difference equation, and it's also homogeneous because all of this has to equal zero. And also what we have here is we have a set of initial conditions. We have a, an initial condition associated with y, and we have an initial condition associated with its derivative, which we're going to take as uh, just arbitrary numbers y naught and v naught. So let's go ahead and assume a solution of the form e to the r times t. Uh, this makes y prime equal to r times e to the rt, and then y double prime equals r squared e to the rt. That's just simple differentiation. Let's go ahead and plug this back in. So what we get is 2 times r squared e to the rt plus 7 times r e to the rt, and then plus 3 times y, which is e to the r times t. And all this is equal to 0 because we have uh, it equal to 0 up here, and it's homogeneous. So the next thing that we are going to do is factor out an e to the rt. And what we are left with is 2r squared plus 7 times r plus 3, all times e to the rt, and this is equal to 0. And then we recognize that since e to the rt is always non-zero for all t and for all r, we can actually divide both sides by e to the rt and therefore canceling it out uh, because we know that we aren't eliminating any roots by, by doing so. And what this gives us is our characteristic equation, which is 2r squared plus 7 times r plus 3 is equal to 0. And let me just go ahead and mention that instead of going through this, this whole entire process right here that I haven't read, instead of going through all this, we can just recognize that we can just pull the coefficients off of them, off of the y double prime, y prime, and y, and just go immediately into our characteristic equation. That'll save us some time, but we still need to recognize that this characteristic equation comes from this assumption right here, that we are assuming a solution of this form. So I'd, I'd say it's perfectly okay to go straight into the characteristic equation, but you've got to remember this fact right here. So anyway, let's go ahead and try to solve for r. The first way that I would try to do it is by factoring. If you can factor it, it's, a, it's much easier than actually solving the uh, quadratic formula because you don't have to do as many simplifications. And we see that we can factor this polynomial, this quadratic polynomial, into 
2r times r, and we can make a 7 if we put the 3 right here and a 1 right here, and uh, both of these will have a plus like that. And again, this is equal to 0. So we get two equations. We get 2r plus 1 is equal to 0, or r plus 3 is equal to 0. And this is what gives us the two roots. We have r is equal to negative 1 half, and also it can equal negative 3. So this is going to be our r1, and this is going to be our r2. So we have uh, one solution we'll call y1, which is e to the r1 times t, which is negative 1 half to the t. And uh, we also get our second solution from our second root, which is e to the negative 3 times t. And again, this, um, these solutions come from our assumption uh, y is equal to e to the rt whenever we solve the characteristic equation. And that's why I said that it's important to realize that this is where the characteristic equation comes because, well, this is where our solution comes. So since we have two possible solutions, what we do is we define our final solution y uh, and this is just going to be linear combinations of these because we have a linear differential equation. So we're going to say that this is equal to c1 times e to the negative one half times t plus c2 times e to the negative three times t. And this is going to be the solution to our general form of this differential equation that we started with. And since r1 and r2 are real roots, negative one half and negative three are both real numbers, we don't have to do anything special. If they were imaginary or complex, then we would have to apply Euler's formula to simplify this into cosine and sines. And if they were repeated roots, then we'd have to do a process called reduction of orders that we will get into uh, in a later video. But since this is the real roots case, and since R1 and R2 are both real, we're done at, at this step right here. We have our general solution. And now it's just a matter of finding C1 and C2, which come from our initial conditions. Y of 0 is equal to Y0, and Y prime of 0 is equal to V0. All right, so we just solved this equation and we got this as our solution and now we want to apply these uh, initial conditions so let's go ahead and differentiate y real quick and whenever we do that we get y prime is equal to negative one half times c one e to the negative one half t and then minus three times c two e to the negative three times t uh, this is going to be our expression for y prime so let's go ahead and apply this first initial condition y of zero is equal to y naught so let's take y of 0, and let's go ahead and plug 0 into our expression for y, our solution. And what we get is we get c1 plus c2. The exponentials cancel out because it's to the 0 power now. And uh, this has to equal y0 as specified by our initial condition. And then also, if we do the same thing with y prime, we get y prime of 0 is equal to negative 1 half times c1 minus 3 times c2. And this is going to be equal to v0. So we have two equations and two unknowns, which are c1 and c2. So I'm going to go ahead and solve for c1 in terms of c2 and y0. So c1 is equal to y0 minus c2. And let's go ahead and plug that result into, uh, into this equation over here. Uh, so what we get is v0 is equal to negative 1 half times y0 minus c2 and then minus 3 times c2. So let's go ahead and simplify that. We get v0 uh, plus 1 half times y0, and this is going to be equal to positive 1 half times c2 and minus 3 times c2, which comes out to be negative 5 halves c2. Uh, so now we can go ahead and solve for c2. This gives us that c2 is equal to negative v0 plus 1 half times y0 all over five halves. And let's go ahead and just write this a little nicer. We'll see that C2 is equal to negative two V naught plus Y naught over five. So this is our expression for C2. And let's go ahead and plug this result back in here to get C1. So C1 is just Y naught minus C2, which comes out to be uh, Y naught plus two V naught plus Y naught over five. So this will be our expression for C2. All right, so now let's go ahead and come back up to our original solution, which was y is equal to C1 e to the negative 1 half t plus C2 e to the negative 3t. And let's go ahead and plug in C2 and uh, C1. Sorry, this should be a 1 right here. Let's go ahead and plug in our expressions for C1 and C2. Um, so what we get is y is equal to y0 plus 2 times v0 plus y0 over 5 and e to the negative 1 half times t, and then plus c2, which is negative uh, 2v0 plus y0, all over 5. 
and then times e to the negative 3 times t. So this will be our final answer to the differential equation given the initial conditions. So this is actually our unique solution because we have already applied the initial conditions for some v naught and some y naught. So that is the real roots case for the constant coefficient homogeneous linear second order differential equation. And um, stay tuned for the next videos where we will cover the other cases, which include the complex roots and the repeated roots. So thanks for watching and be sure to post any questions that you have. Uh, if you've got homework questions, you can send those in as well and I'll uh, make video solutions for those. Or if it's just general questions over differential equations, feel free to comment or email me or whatever.